Welcome to Family Life with Mama Rita. Well, you see me in my royal ladies' clothes. I'm wearing royal ladies' clothes because this year, royal ladies celebrates 30 years. Hooray! On the 3rd of May, I hope it's 3rd. Let me check. I don't want to make a mistake. Um, 3rd of May. Is it 3rd or 2nd? Oh, first is, first is the Wednesday, Thursday, oh, then fourth, third, sorry. On the third of May, third of May of this year, we are having something we call the prayer tone. 30 hours non-stop prayer. The women in royal house, we just finished our Deba. Tribal Deba, cultural Deba, and we are continuing. Our 30th anniversary is going to be celebrated the whole year. We are finishing in December. And the programs lined up, my darling, is something else. Coming up is our prayer tone. 30 hours of prayer. We are starting on the 3rd of May. And we finish 3rd of May at 12 it, yes, 3rd of May at 12 noon. And then I hope my facts are correct. We are starting on 3rd of May. I get my facts right. If I don't get it right, I get it right next week. And then we are finishing on Saturday, 6 p.m. So all the groups involved in the prayer tone, please get ready. But today, oh my God, one other reason why I am wearing royal ladies' clothes is that just on Sunday, we ended our first camp of the year, the European camp, which was from the first day to Sunday. It was powerful, oh my God. We felt the presence of God in Milton Kings. If you didn't come, please, next year, get your visa. Some people don't have passports. I called somebody. I'm taking you to South Africa. Only to realize she didn't have a passport. I don't know how she was able to get a passport within two days. My darling, get a passport. Get a visa next year. You are coming with me. If you can't wait for next year, in November, we are having our third camp meeting for the year. So the UK or the Europe camp meeting is first, which is always the first week in April, sometimes the end of March. But it was powerful from the 3rd to the 7th of April. Powerful, powerful, powerful. And I want to say a very big thank you to our father, the Apostle General, who came to speak. And I want to say a very big thank you to the founding mothers of UK, um, Reverend Monsieur Pariado and Reverend Nandi Amano. You did just, I mean, you are amazing, amazing, amazing. I mean, amazing. All I had to do was to come with my T-shirts, my skirts, and my royal ladies' dress. I mean, you did such an awesome job. And may the God that we saw 30 years ago, may that God bless you, bless your husbands, bless your children and your household. So, my darling, I think you are guessing where I am. I am in the UK. <laughs> I hear that's the way they say it. I'm in UK, Milton Keynes. And I have very special guests today. They are no strangers to Royal House Chapel, but they are strangers to my screen. <laughs> the way I've been pulling these people, especially the woman. Mm. Oh my God. Mm. 
When you see her, you would understand. I've been pulling her for years. I mean, not months, years. Reverend Chief Ape, finally I got her. So they are here with me. The head of our UK and Europe churches, Reverend Darkith Amano, and then the senior pastor of our East London church, Reverend Mamanandi. Please welcome. Finally, I got you. Welcome to Family Life Thank you with Mama Rita. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you so much for being my guest. I know you are so tired after Royal Ladies Camp meeting, and you are supposed to be on holidays. So thank you. Yes. Reverend Dahl, I want you to say a very big thank you to your wife oh. for the sleepless nights, yeah. for the work she did yeah. towards the Royal Ladies yeah. um, 2024 camp meeting, 30th anniversary, anniversary. edition. Yeah. Reverend Darkith, you were at the camp. Yeah. What was your impression? Oh my goodness me. It was um, awesome. Awesome to say the least. And the organization this time round was um, almost near perfect. Everything went according to us and we intended it to be, especially with the spiritual atmosphere. Um, the prayers that went into it, the women presidents, the various presidents um, really uh, put themselves together. And then our, our um, mothers, um, Mama Messi, Mama Nandi, oh my goodness me. Mama Nandi had sleepless nights. I mean, she wasn't sleeping. And um, it was so awesome that I'm, I'm not surprised at the outcome yeah. of the conference from Thursday, Friday, um, and then, no, from Thursday, Friday, and then this morning. Mm -hmm. um, this morning, it's been awesome. So all the three days has been awesome. The people have been blessed, and we are living here with a deposit of God's grace and the fact that there has been a shift, not in only in the atmosphere of the women, but in the atmosphere of the Church Royal House Chapel here in the UK. Amen. And the room was packed, packed full. full. Packed full. With an overflow as well. And so we are believing God that next year um, we would have to probably change our chairs or um, expand, go somewhere else. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Before today, we are doing Acts, Mama Rita. But before we do Acts, Mama Rita, Mama Nandi, yes, Mama. how have we been able to come this far? 30 years. You have been there from the beginning until now. We call you the founding mother or one of our founding mothers because you actually started with me. I started with nine women. As executives, plus me, we were 10 executives. And how we have been able to come this far, I do not know. But Mama Nandi, how have we been able to come this far? Mama Rita, thank you for having us. Um, this weekend, Royal Ladies United Kingdom in Europe started a camp celebrating the 30 years. Now, for some of us, when we look back, it's beautiful and it's interesting to see how the God that we serve has brought us this far. 30 years ago when we started, it was like we didn't know what we were doing because we were all young, we were new in ministry. Um, people like you have been in ministry for a while, but whatever we were doing was also new to you. But we started, I think, with God. And God led us like a flag, showing us what to do, showing us the way, showing us where to pass, where not to pass. And 30 years on, God has brought us this far. Now having come not only in Ghana, but in United Kingdom, in the United States, it is only the God of Royal House Chapel the God of our father, Sam Kranchiankra, and the God of our mother, Mama Rita, that has brought us this far. You said, how did we come this far? We had God. We also had ourselves, or we have ourselves. We were together as friends, as families. You know, 
we share together, we cry together, we chat together, we help each other. Um, where, if anything happens to me in the United Kingdom now, and mommy, you are in Ghana, I know you will fly today. And that family bond is one of the things that has brought us together and brought us this far. Our children are together. And um, in this camp, we had two of our daughters oh ministering. I mean, I was filled with joy and pride to see the young people that we prayed for, to see them now standing and ministering and sharing the word of God. It is just amazing. Mommy, to add, you know, when we started, we would gather and we pray for our children. We pray for our families. And 30 years on, I'm seeing the fruits of the prayers that we pray. We serve a living God. The God that started with us never left us. But from year to year, showed his glory in our lives. God bless you for bringing us this far. I was actually going to talk about it. So Ghana and America, get ready. What the Lord spoke to me this year is that we should start showcasing our children. Right from the beginning, 30 years ago, they were with us. Some of them were toddlers. Some of them were crawling. 30 years down the line, what has God done for us? My darling, 30 years down the line, those who are on our backs, when we started Royal Ladies, are still with us. And I don't want you to take things for granted. It doesn't always happen that our children will serve our God. That our children will be interested in what we do. My darling, we are old school. We come and we are doing our things. Mrs. Opariado will do her thing. This one will do her thing. Dr. Anas, to have our children be with us. I mean, go around the country, go around everywhere, go around Ghana. Almost every women's organization you meet, especially within the churches, women's fellowship you meet, you see old ladies. 50 years and above, sometimes 60 years and above. But for us in Royal House Chapel, Royal Ladies, we have our children with us. Those who are in their 30s, those who are in their 20s, those who are in their teens, serving our God. And this year, the surprise was that the children who were with us, like I said, were with us when we were babies were with us when um, they, were, they were toddlers this year. The Lord showcased them. And one of them is Pastor Rebecca. Rebecca Nyawunu. I don't know how Rebecca was when we started. I'm sure she was about five, six years ago. Five years, six years. Rebecca was a speaker, and oh my God, I didn't know these children were learning. Hey, Mama Nandi, if we don't set up, these children will take over. And then Reverend Naka also did, oh my God. We are going to do the same in Ghana. We are going to do the same in America. Our children that have come along with us, that, has, that have fallen in love with our Jesus, had an encounter with our God, we will sit down as mothers and fathers and they will preach to us. So, Pastor Rebecca and Reverend Naka, thank you. Thank you for coming along with us. Thank you for serving our God. Thank you for being a part of royal ladies. We know that tomorrow, when we are not there, you people will move on and will carry the mantle and run with it. God bless you. We will go on a short commercial break. 
I'm expecting one guest. She's here. We will go on a short commercial break, and when we come back, I would introduce the special guests. Hello, people of God. This is Reverend Papa, and I'd like to specially invite you this and every Friday to prayer, miracle, and prophetic service right here, Royal House Chapel, every Friday. We are lifting up prayer. It's a time of worship. It's a time of the prophetic. You don't want to miss out at all. I will be there with other sons of the Apostle General, and it's going to be a wonderful time in the presence of God. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but by prayer and supplication, lift up unto God. Join me this and every Friday. It's prayer, prophetic, worship, and a wonderful time with miracles. 6 p.m. every Friday. I'll see you there. God bless you. Welcome back from our short break. If you are just joining us, well, today is a special edition. 30th Anniversary Royal Lady Special Edition. Um, I was mentioning that this year Royal Ladies is celebrating 30 years. That is why I am beautifully dressed in my Royal Ladies attire. And on Easter Monday, Oh my God, we started our Royal Ladies 30th anniversary in grand style where we did the tribal deba or the cultural deba where people from different nations, different nationalities, different tribes within Ghana came together to showcase their tribes and their countries. Hitherto, we've been taught that everything African was demonic, everything African is satanic. Please, everything African is not demonic and everything African is not satanic. Don't you check me out in my cloth, typical Ghanaian ATL cloth, my darling. It's beautiful and it brings us out. I have already introduced Reverend Darketh, who is the head of our UK and Europe churches. And then I've also introduced Mama Nandi, who is the senior pastor of our East London mission. Also with me today, oh my God. And you know I introduced Mama Nandi as a founding mother. Another founding mother who has just joined us is Reverend Messi Opariadu. Reverend Messio Pariado stood, has stood with me. She's been with me from day one. She was my vice president 30 years ago. 30 years on and still counting. She refuses to hand over. She said if I don't hand over, she will also hand over. We are all handing over at the same time to our children. And oh my God. At the beginning, I told you, we just ended a three-day powerful, powerful, powerful 30th edition camp meeting in UK in MK, Milton Keynes. And the head of royal ladies, the whole of UK and Europe, is Reverend Mrs. Messi Opariado. Mama Messi. You would always be an auntie. Auntie Mercy. My, my children still call you Auntie Mercy. The only auntie. I like that. Welcome. Thank you, ma'am. To family life. Amen. I think this is your very first time on family life. Yes, That's serious. I know. I don't know why you left me to go to UK. Oh, Jesus. Are we going to go into that? No, we won't go into that. Bless you. We won't go into that. But we've been talking about royal ladies. Mm. 
in the past 20, 25 minutes. How have we been able to come this far 30 years? The first thing I will say is that we've been able to come this far by the finger of God. By the finger of the Lord. Because when we all started, we didn't know what we were doing. We didn't know our left from our right. Some of us did not know the Bible quotations. John 3.16. Some of us knew it, even part, part of it. But to be able to put a message together, to be able to sit down and prepare, to be able to stand before the people and speak the word was a problem. But today, this God that our father, Apostle General, introduced us to, let me make this point, that before some of us came to Royal House, then IBWC, we were in other churches. Yeah. But the exposure we had, the, 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 the help and the encouragement mm. that we had when we came to Royal House, mm. we didn't get it from where mm. we came from. So we didn't know anything. We didn't know how to do anything. Mm. But ever since we set foot in Royal House, the God of our father, Apostle General Sam mm. Chiangra, took us in, mm. gave us the grace, yeah. gave us the wisdom, mm. And put his word in our mouth so that we too we will be able to impart on the women. So, ma, if you ask me, I will say that it is not by might, Amen. neither is it by power, Amen. but by the Spirit of God Amen. have we come this far. I saw your daughter. I was there at Kolibu <laughs> when she was born. Of course. I was at her naming ceremony. Of course. I was at her dedication. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether to cry, whether to laugh, whether to scream, whether to jump when I heard your daughter speak. I mean, this was, I've heard her lead worship and praise it so many times. But it was the first time I had sat under her feet to hear her speak. I know you're a proud mother. How did you feel when your daughter was sitting down in this international conference, see her deliver the word of God? I was in tears. I couldn't control myself. Wow. Because I remembered than that when we came to Royal House, then IBWC, we had a children's day. Okay. And on the children's day, the kids come to display. Okay. Now, Rebecca was put on stage to lead worship. Okay. Wow. And after the worship, she even did just about two, three, five minutes. Five minutes. After the worship, you said to me, watch your daughter. Wow. She will not only lead worship, but she will make you and me proud. Wow. At that time, how old were they? They were about four, five, five six, seven years old. Wow. Sunday school children come into this play. She did the worship, you know, and then after that, you called me and you said, Auntie Mercy, check this, your daughter. Wow. One day, she will make us proud. Wow. And I was like, hey, okay, thank you. Wow. So, Ma, to be honest with you, when she grabbed the microphone, my mind went back to that word. Wow. And I couldn't help myself. I was trying not to go down and start crying because wow. Nana Koshia is there and they have warned me that I should stop crying. So I tried my best, but to be honest with you, ma, you couldn't. I couldn't hold my tears back. 
I was wow. just in tears. Wow. Because I knew that this one, it is God. Wow. Mama Nandi. Yes, ma'am. How did you feel watching your own daughters? Mm -hmm. Reverend Naka, Reverend Anakosuya Kranchiankra, and Reverend Rebecca. How did you feel? Children, you have known them since they were babies. Mm -hmm. How did you feel sitting mm -hmm. down and listening to them? Either too, Army Royal Ladies Camp meeting is being the older ones coming to bless us, the men coming to bless us. How did you feel that children, daughters, we have raised within us? Mm. How did you feel seeing them minister to us? It took me back to the days when we go. Sorry. It, it took me back to when we used to go on retreats. Yeah. And we will gather and we will pray for our children. And as I stood at the back watching them, all I can envision is we praying for them. We laboring in prayer mm. for them. We travailing. Mm. And I was thinking God is a prayer answering mm. God. Because every prayer that we prayed, mm. we are now seeing the manifestation. Mm. Now, even though we are seeing them today, standing on the platform, ministering the word of God, mm. what we have failed to look at is that God has taken them step by step. Yes. They went through primary school. Yes secondary university, yeah. graduated, yeah. working, and every step of their lives, mm. the prayer that we prayed, mm. God watched over it to perform. Mm. In our 30 years, our year of divine shift, mm. we now see God shifting the, the generation oh and shifting God. the mantle oh upon our daughters and upon our sons. And for me, I'm so grateful mm. because we serve a prayer answering God. Very proud, very grateful. I stood at the back. I was filled with such pride. I don't know. You know, you see the pride that you, you feel that joy. I, it was so amazing. And um, thank you for leading us um, to pray, to come together, and for this ministry. We couldn't have done it without you. Maybe my last question or my last but one question before we do, or we're going to ask Mama Rita. How was this year's camp different from the previous years? Honestly, I enjoyed this year's camp. That's right. I felt God That's this right. year's camp. Right. I prayed my heart out. Yes. I don't know what you saw different from the other camp. And what is your expectation or your expectations for the Ghana camp in July? This year's camp was very powerful. I mean, all our camps are very powerful. But this year, the expectation was very high. Yeah. Um, it's the 30th anniversary. Yeah. Um, it's a year of a divine shift. Yeah. Everybody is expecting things to change and things to shift in their lives. But you see, we picked our scripture from Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 1. Mm. And in that scripture, it says that, and the heavens opened. And the heavens opened. And the heavens opened. Wow. For heavens to open means that the heavens had been closed. Mm. Right. And so this year, you see things opening up. You see people who were closed in coming mm. out. We, You see, we had most of the people who mm. came on were mm. some of our young people. Yeah. We saw our young people displaying. Mm. We had an opening night mm. with um, um, the ladies that you have touched mm. and impacted mm. from different nations. Different nations. Different nations and nationalities. Oh, wow. And, um, and when you listen to them, you see how far in 30 years God has brought us, God has brought royal ladies, God has brought royal house chapel, and they came with an expectation. Wow. They know that in this house they will find God. Amen. People came expecting a miracle. Amen. People came expecting an encounter. Amen. People came expecting to have an experience Amen. of who our God Amen. is. And I know that they are going out of this place with that experience. Amen. Mommy, during the service, I was telling my sister that I am so full and excited because the people that daddy ministered to, apart from my daughter and the 
every one of them. I, some of them, you see, because they are congregation members, yes, we right. know what they are going through. Right. And we can see the deliverances. We can see the power of mm. God. Mm. We serve a living God. Amen. And this camp has been powerful. And we are the first to start the 30th anniversary yeah. celebration and the first camp. And it's amazing that we had a camp like um, Ezekiel 1-1. It's in the 30th year, in the fourth month, That's on right. the fifth day. It's so prophetic yeah. for us. So this month, uh, this camp has been powerful. But in addition to that, if you are listening to me and you couldn't come to the MK camp, it doesn't, it, it's okay. Get ready for the Ghana camp yes, because right. it's going to be powerful. Amen. This is the status. The main cause yeah. is going to be yeah. great. Mm, and yeah. get ready for the dessert. Abba. God bless you, Mama. Amen. Mama Mercy. My excitement was the Friday morning okay. when we came in. And the way the ladies rushed from the back mm. to the front with such energy with such excitement, jumping, praising God and thanking God, I could feel the liberty. Wow, the liberty. I could feel that people who had chains mm. had been let loose. Mm. I could feel that ladies who hitherto, mm. I saw a few of them from my ministry, from my mission, who even in our small place, when you push them to the front, they won't it's difficult go. for them. But I saw all of them running to the front and wow. jumping and excited. And I just said a prayer. I said, Father, thank you. Thank you. For this camp. Amen. Thank you for the liberation Amen. that you have brought to these women. Amen. Our 30th anniversary, God has shifted us. Amen from a place where we were kept in bondage yeah. to a place where we are now released mm. with every destiny in us mm. released. Mm. This camp was powerful. Amen. But I believe with all my heart that Ghana will be something else. Amen. I will meet you in Ghana. Amen. And like our mother says, when I meet you in Ghana, I will meet you and we will share our testimonies Amen. together. God bless you, our woman king. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. And concerning our children, mm. I remember one prayer we always prayed. Mm. And I have to say this in our language. Mm. Remember our children. Our children. Remember our children. That was all our mm. prayer at that time. We didn't even ask God to give us money. No. I think that is why we are struggling with the money now. <laughs> we should have asked for the money from the beginning. Like, but now we'll have a lot. All we cared about, to be honest with you, Achoo. I never remembered as, as God going together as executives to pray and ask God for something for ourselves. All we did was our, ch our children. And I am glad that the God who sees and yes, yes, even though we cried, he had the cry of our children. And he has come in and he has turned things around. God bless you, our mother. God bless you. Please make a date with me from the 4th to the 7th of July. That is the Ghana camp. The 4th to the 7th of July. Unfortunately, city of Shiloh, is full. I mean, full, 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 full. We can't take any more um, at the city of Shiloh. But you can live stream with us. And then what you can also do, um, you can get a hotel or a guest house or a hostel. University, hey, um, Central University um, is there. And there are so many hostels around Central University. You can get one. And once you let us know, we would arrange for a bus to pick you up. And you can get your accommodation. Don't be left out. Or you can live stream with us. We want to go straight away and do Ask Mama Rita. 
So any of you can decide to answer. Hello, Mama Rita. I am a Liberian watching you from Liberia. My wife has been denying me sex hey, for several months. Hey, some wives. Denying me sex for several months now. And she's not bothered. I am running out of patience. Is this grounds for divorce? Reverend Darkit. Mm. <laughs> That's a very interesting one. Very, um, very interesting. Well, so I, I don't think that um, it's a very solid ground initially for divorce. Mm. Um, that's my first um, comment. But then the thing too is this, that one would want to ask. The first, I think one of the things that you need to do is, um, from this gentleman from uh, Liberia, mm. is um, first and foremost talk to your counselor okay. or talk to your pastor because... Um, women have moments and they have moods. They have times. And um, probably you, you, the man, are also not doing something that is, um, that, that you're doing something that puts the woman off. Um, probably, um, I'm not indicting you um, if you are listening to me, but then sometimes um, the way we speak to our women, the way we speak to our wives, the way we talk to them, or probably our inconsiderate attitude at home um, just pushes them off, wards them off. Has she just given birth recently? That's also another thing. There are so many factors that could probably be responsible for these things. So instead of judging her, what you need to do is to investigate and find out, first and foremost, you have an introspective, introspective um, um, look at yourself as to is there something that I'm doing that is pushing my wife away from me? And if after that, then probably, and then having a chat, and then you need to also engage her, talk to her, get to know what it is that is wrong with her, and then probably you'll be able to help her out. Because so many people have done this, um, they've been able to speak to their spouses. Sometimes it's the flip side, it's the women, or sometimes it's the men. But when you engage your wife, then, or your husband, your, your spouse, then you would understand what he or she is going through, and then you probably will be able to bring um, a solution to it. But if you left her that way, and then you don't talk to her, you don't engage her, and you assume and decide that um, based on that, I'm going to divorce, that's not a very good ground. That's a very poor and shaky ground for you. The other thing is this, that if you feel um, that you are being blocked on every side, then talk to your counselor, talk to your pastor. And then your pastor probably will be able to have a word with not not your in-laws, not friends, not any other person um, uh, probably who is not going anywhere or whose marriage is weak uh, or somebody who also wants to align himself with you. But speak to your pastor. That will be the first, the other place um, of call. And I believe that when your pastor calls, your wife will be probably be able to open up some more to um, him or to them, and then um, you find a solution. And so I pray that um, you'll be able to find a solution in that arena and that area, because it's also very disheartening when, as a man, um, you've been denied sex for how many months? He says months. How many months? Um, then um, probably several months. Then there's a see, there's a there's a there's a problem within the marriage. I can I can say that with with without any um, um, without um, Bl uh, without blinking an eye, there would be a challenge, and you need to seek help, seek counsel, seek advice. God bless you. The women, would you want to add on? Um, yeah, I believe that every woman, if she entered into the marriage from from where 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 did it? Liberia. Yeah. Let me say that some way, somehow, we Africans, our upbringing, when it comes to sex, sometimes is a little bit different to the other people, to the other nationalities. We, let me just use myself as a Ghanaian girl. We in Ghana, 
Sometimes you even think that some couples think that to have sex with their own spouses who they are married to is, uh, let me use the word in quotes, dirty. So in case that is the situation, then obviously you begin to have problems. But once the woman is liberated, once the woman comes to realize that it is the wife's duty to satisfy the husband. In fact, the Bible says that the wife's body belongs to the husband yeah. and vice versa. Mm. So once the wife comes to that understanding, mm. she would definitely be able to yield to her husband, number one. Number two, like Reverend Darkett said, we women, we like to be pampered. We like to be loved. That is why the Bible said in Ephesians, husband, love your wife. But most of the time, we think that if the woman doesn't submit, then it is difficult for me to love her. But please, these two things are completely different. I always tell my, counsel my counselees, when God called you as a man into the room, all he said to you was, Love your wife. Simple. I like that. That's what God said to you. God didn't say, love your wife when she submits. Okay. And when God called the woman into the room, by the time the woman came out, all God said to her was, submit to your husband. God didn't say, submit to your husband only when she loves you. So these two statements are, they are, they don't, they are not statements that depend on each other. Love your wife, simple. And when you love a woman and you take good care of her, trust me, she will respond. But if the slightest thing you are angry, where you shouldn't shout, you are shouting. The woman comes back from work. She is tired. She goes to the kitchen to cook. You are sitting in the lounge with your legs crossed. And after dinner, she will bath for the children, take care of the home. And then in the night, you want her to come closer. <laughs> she will tell you, I have a headache. She will find a possible excuse for you. For which reason she won't be able to come close to you. But, brother, love your wife. Amen. Cherish her. Amen. Take her out sometimes. Go on a date. Amen. She's your wife, yes, but she's also your girlfriend. Yeah. Go on a date. Refresh your marriage. Buy her something that she loves. On her birthday, give her a treat. And trust you me, every woman loves it when our men show us this, this, this kind of attention. And trust you me, your woman will come asking you to rather come to her. Plus, if you are a Christian, pray about this. There is nothing that our God cannot do. There is, sex is part of God's commandment. So if you go to her, in, go to God in prayer, you are definitely going to have an answer. So, would you want to, or they've answered? I think they've covered okay. it all. So, you heard me, my darling. Sex is understood differently by the woman That's right. and by the man. For the man, the man can get angry mm. at the woman mm -hmm. and within a minute or two still wants to jump on her, still desire her. and have sex. Mm. Women are not like that. No way. Once you have or once you hurt a woman, you haven't apologized. Mm -hmm. You haven't made peace. Mm -hmm. My darling, she will never desire for sex. Mm -hmm. So if you've been hurting your wife and she's still having sex with you, it's because she just wants to, you know, let sleeping dogs lie. But most women will not. So number one, you need to find out have you hurt her in any way? 
Is this something she's spoken about? And yet she doesn't see any change. If that is the reason, she won't have sex with you. If you have hurt her and never apologized, you have hurt her and never made peace, you, you insult her and embarrass her before the children and before house helps, she would never want to sleep with you. That is the first thing. The second thing, if you haven't heard my teaching on sex, go back. I have them on, on um, Facebook and Facebook and the other one, on, and then Instagram. If you go, um, family life with Mama Rita, um, sex, it will show. Maybe you never satisfy your, your wife. All you know is to jump over her. Have sex. And then the next minute, you turn your face to the wall. And you are watching a Nigerian movie. Or something funny on your phone. Or you start snoring. As to whether she enjoys sex with you or not, you've never asked. As to whether she reaches orgasm or not, she doesn't, you, you never ask. For her, sex is a waste of time. If sex is a waste of time, I don't enjoy sex with you. Why will I continue to have sex with you? You are asking um, if your wife doesn't have sex with you, is it grounds for divorce? Well, I want the women to know. I don't know what happens in Liberia, but in Ghana, if you refuse your spouse sex for a maximum of two years, it equals or it amounts to divorce. That is the law in Ghana. I don't know about other nations. So if you're a woman and you can stay and not have sex with your husband, for a whole year, or you were a husband, and you don't satisfy your wife for a whole year, he or she can go to court and demand for divorce because there's no sex in the marriage. This is something a lot of couples do not know. I came on family life with a lawyer, a family lawyer, and she spoke about it, lawyer Vivian, Thank you, and I give you a shout. So, number one, a cause for divorce that is two years, that is in Ghana. Find out what happens in Liberia. But then, find out, sit your wife down. Why are you not have, having sex with me? Are you sick? Are you offended by the way I treat you? Don't you enjoy sex? I mean, there certainly must be a reason. Like Reverend Darkett said, get your counselors or get your pastors. Mama Mercy said, since you married your wife, you've never done anything for your wife. Give her a treat. Her birthday is coming. Don't pretend you don't know her birthday date. If you don't know it, ask the children. If you forgot last Valentine, my darling, Mother's Day is coming. If you forget Mother's Day, Christmas is coming. You have no excuse not to buy your wife a gift, not to give her a treat, not to take her out. Do something for your wife. And as for women, if you honor us, if you respect us, if you treat us well, mm. if you say we should jump, oh, we will ask you how high, how high should we go. How high? So the next question, I think. Mommy, can the, I add this? Yes, you can. You, you can. Please. You go to the next question. Um, 
It looks like everything we have said gears to the man. Yeah. But we are not saying that it is right for your wife to refuse you sex. No. No, it is not right. So, lady, you too, whatever it is that has made you not to give your husband sex, please, you can also make a move. Yeah. Talk to your husband. Yeah. If you love your husband and you are in the marriage to stay, then please, lady, talk to your husband. Let her know that this and that and that is the reason why I am denying you sex. To be honest with you, most men, they are, they, like Mama said, they have had an argument with you. The next moment, yeah. they desire you. But we, the women, we are different. I think when so they have an argument, that's that when they when, desire you it. more. That is it. When you are angry and you go around shaking your buttocks, that one makes it even the night they want you. So, lady, all we are saying is that for the sake of your marriage, and especially if there are children in your marriage, and especially for the grace of God, the sake of God, the Bible says that because of the many witnesses that surround us, lady, you also talk to your husband. Make an effort. If after you have spoken to him about whatever or however he's treating you and he doesn't change, then please, you need to seek help. God bless you. God bless you. This is from Gambia. She says, hi, my mentors. I am from the Gambia. I have been following your program from the very beginning. Wow. Mm. And I have learned a lot. God bless you. Though I am a Muslim, mm. but I have learned a lot about marriage and sex between partners. Wow. You didn't um, add your name, but my son or my daughter from Gambia, God bless you for being a part of family life with Mama Rita. Somebody says, Mama Rita, please, we are about to get married this year. And I just tuned to your television, to Powerline, to Powerline TV, and saw a nice program and will need counseling from you. So please, how may we reach you? So normally when you watch Family Life, there's a number that comes on your screen. You can call that number and say you are getting married and you want counselors. Um, we always tell people in Royal House Chapel, we have very, very good married counselors, marriage counselors, and our doors are always opened. If you are not within Accra, you are outside Accra, we can still do the counseling through Zoom. If you even live outside the country, we can do a Zoom um, counseling for you. So just call the numbers and say you are getting married and you want us to get your counselors and we will do that. My next question I'm going through a lot in my marriage. My husband is no longer having time for me and my child. He's now with a different woman in Kumasi and even makes it obvious without shame or guilt. In fact, he now makes us feel like we don't exist. Wow. Hmm. And when a woman says, hmm, hmm, please, I need your help in prayer and counseling. Thank you very much, Mama. Mama Nandi. She's been married. The husband is no longer, the husband no longer has time for her and their child. He's seeing somebody in Kumasi, does it openly. She needs our prayer and she needs a word from us. I think she, she said it rightly. She needs a prayer. 
because um, if the husband doesn't have time for you and he's seeing somebody, it's an indication that there's a big problem in the marriage. Some time back, um, I was chatting with Mama Rita and we we're talking about servicing your marriage. Um, and you used um, how we take care of our teeth. So every time you have to take care of, if you buy a car, you have to service your car. You have to do MOT. Sometimes we get very comfortable in our marriage and we think that once we are married, that is it. The man will always be there. Everything will always be what it should be. But as you grow together and children come, uh, the children come, um, and then um, your work and everything. You know, sometimes there are so many things that um, affects the smooth movement of the marriage, the smooth, the way you started, the love and everything. And so um, to, to every woman listening to us, if you are married, you need to be intentional. You need to take time to see if anything is going wrong, you don't sit. You engage prayer right from when you see the challenges showing up. You find help right from when you see things not going right. At those moments when it looks like it's a bit far gone, all hope is not lost. Engage in prayer and believe God to bring him back. Bible says that the heart of the king the, is in the hands of, of the Lord. So as you pray and believe God, in a minute, in the moment, God can turn everything around for you. Number two, engage counselors. Use the number on our line and call us. Number three, if there is somebody, if your pastor or, you know, if you're in a church and your pastor can help, or somebody that the man will listen to, a good counselor. In the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So if there's somebody that the man will listen to, approach the person and see if that person can help. But having said all that, I will also add that sit down, think through your mind, and ask yourself, when did it start going wrong? And if you're able to identify that, and you can start looking for us, then you can start looking for answers from that point. Thank you. Anybody wants to add? Oh. No, I think um, Mama Messi and Mama Nandi have articulated mm. um, very well um, what the issues mm. at stake are. Mm. So, and then above all, um, prayer, prayer, prayer. Prayer can change the hands and turn the hands of um, any situation that has gone evil. And so I would also recommend prayer. Um, the heart of the king is in the Lord's hand, and he turns it the way that he wants to, um, wherever he is. Um, probably if it is that um, um, he's been taken somewhere, I'm saying this advisedly, um, your prayer can resolve it. It will bring 10 things around for you and bring your husband back to you. And so um, in, that is um, if everything was lining up before um, another woman took your husband away. Then the power of prayer, I believe in the power of prayer, under such circumstances, will be able to reverse some of these things and then bring you back your joy and then your happiness and your comfort. God bless you. So I'll let Reverend Darke pray for you now. But before Reverend Darke prays for you, like Mama Nandi said, search yourself. What did you do to contribute? After marriage, did you let yourself go? You were no longer the woman he met. You were not dressing up. You were not tidying up. He's at home. You don't even care what you wear. Are you keeping the home tidy? Is the home neat enough? Or when you had your child... Your child now became your husband. You never had time for him again. I know women that their children are even three years, four years. They still want the child. They insist that the child will sleep with them. I mean, you are driving your 
husband out of the home. But there's something called the woman power that a lot of people do not know. My darling, that man is yours. Unless you two, you stole him from another uh-huh. woman. That's what I was going to say. But if you didn't steal him from another woman, and the man is legally yours, if you go on your knees, That's right. and you pray, That's right. and you say, God, bring my husband back home. Uh-huh. I bring enmity That's right. between my husband mm. And that woman in Kumasi, my darling, you'll be shocked. I'm telling you, you'll be shocked. Mm -hmm. The man will come home. Go on his knees Mm -hmm. and beg you. He won't come empty-handed. He will come with peace offering for you. I can say it to the glory of the Lord. That's right. That these three women seated here that you see, mm. 38 years in marriage. That's right. 38 years in marriage. That's Mama, right. now you've been married for how long? 29. 29 years in marriage. Our husbands have known no other women but us. Mm. Why? Because we prayed for it. That's right. We said, God, bring blessings to our husbands. Mm. Let them know. That God is blessing them because of us. We said, God, honor us before our husbands. That's right. G- give us favor before our husbands. That's right. If ever they are even tempted to go out, mm. which they've never. Mm. But if they are ever tempted to go out, when they go out, give them light off. Uh-huh. Immediately they come to us. Yeah, give them, on. my darling, there is power in prayer. That's right. Ma- Mama, mercy, tell the lady something. How much we have been praying for our husbands. Sweetheart. That 38 years. That's right. We can sit here, ah. have mouth to talk. To talk. Please tell them something. And the mouth we have is not man mouth. Oh. Yes. It is God mouth. Yes. Because our husbands are hard nuts. And I remember when I married my husband, mommy. My husband was somebody that he was sought after wow. by other women. He was very handsome at the time. So handsome. It's hey, I remember Abba him too well. In his beard. <laughs> that is what killed me. Drew me to him. I call it Abba. But the thing is, by prayer, yeah. by prayer, by prayer, by prayer, if that man is yours and you yourself, you didn't steal him, mm-hmm. maybe when the man was going out with somebody, you yourself, you went around ah, before they were aware you had, so it is not yours. But if the man is yours, my dear, don't worry. Go down on your knees. But one thing I want to tell you, my dear, don't fight your man. Do not fight him. And do not fight the other woman either. That is the problem most of us women we have. Anytime we see our men going after other women, we tend to fight the other woman. Even if the other woman was to have seduced your man, your man gave in. Yeah. He's a man. He has weakness. Yes. Mm-hmm. But by your prayer, like mama said, yeah. no woman will be able to seduce your husband. Wow. So sweetheart, embark on a three-day fast. Yeah. And all you are asking God for is that father, bring my, bring my husband. When I met my husband, like I was saying, there were so many women. Mm. All I did was to say, father, bring me my husband. I don't know where he is, wherever he is, whichever woman is with him. If that woman is not my husband's wife, husband, take my husband and bring him to me. And at that time, my husband was in a serious relationship. And I know it too well. <laughs> they were going to get married. Yeah. I've seen the engagement ring uh, and the wedding oh, ring. Oh, the trunk they bought. 
became my own because I hid. Meanwhile, you didn't even know the woman. I didn't know the woman. At that time, you didn't know the man. I didn't know the All man. All you were doing was you two, you were praying. Father, God, bring me, bring my, me husband. my husband. If my husband is in the life of, of another, another woman, woman, and the woman is a Vashti, make me an Esther. Abba. Let that woman misbehave and let the man come to me. You as were somewhere praying your as prayer. As if you knew. Mm. It was the misbehavior mm -hmm. that took the woman, the Vashti, away and brought Queen Esther. Amen. And like you said, for 30, 38 years, God has kept us. We are only recommending what has worked for us. Yes. Yeah. That is what we know. The word of God and prayer and do your part as a wife. When your husband goes and he comes home, don't tell him, are you now coming? Go back to where you came from. Oh, trust me, he will go. Because maybe that woman, when you, you cook, you don't put a bib across your husband's chest. She is happy to put a bib. Sing even to your husband whilst he's eating. So you have to do something else by your prayer. And I guarantee you, your husband, once he's yours, he's coming back home with a peace offering. And this time your marriage will be more wonderful and more peaceful than it used to be. Reverend, please pray for her. So we lift up our voices and we join our faith collectively together and we make a representation to the powers in heaven mm. that wherever your husband is, mm. because he's your bona fide husband, mm. we draw his heart back to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. Because he has children with you, yes. we pull his heart back to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Any dust, anything that has been thrown into his atmosphere, mm. We confuse the, uh, the enemy and we make a declaration mm -hmm. that it will not have a hold on him from today. Yes, we break that hold in the name of Jesus. Yes, and we release him from the clutches of a foreigner. Mm. From the clutches of another woman. Yes, in the mighty name of Jesus Amen. Christ. We say within 24 hours, within mm. 72 hours, mm. may he turn around. Mm. May the skills fall off his eyes Jesus. and may he run back to your bosom mm. in the mighty name of Jesus Amen. Christ. And we pray that you would also live right by him Amen. and right by God. Amen. Father, we thank you. We, we thank honor you. you. Let us have a testimony, a short testimony out of this. Yes, Lord. Out of the counsel of the multitude of those of us seated here, mm. let there be a provision of a breakthrough miracle for our sister mm. in Jesus' mm. mighty name. We have declared and we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Um, our sister, please, or our daughter, send us a testimony if God does it. Right. I when know God, God will it. do it. Yeah. Right. So send us a testimony. God, God bless you. God.